Hello, my name is Mojgan Orsini. I'm one of the registered dietitians and certified diabetes educators here at FACI Medical Center. Um, I've been working at FACI for about almost uh, three and a half years. And today's class, we are going to be talking about healthy weight management at a glance. The topics that we're going to discuss are what contributes to weight gain, weight loss myths, current trends in weight loss, steps to losing weight, weight loss uh, tips, and resources. The way the class schedule is as follows is today's class is class number one, healthy weight management at a glance. Then we are going to have five more classes that proceed after this class. The second class on the six week program series is building a balanced plate and eating it eating to nourish. The third class is grocery shopping, dining out, and label reading. The fourth class is cooking and meal preparation tips. Fifth class is practicing healthy habits and physical activity. And the last class is, is putting all of the classes together. That's what we call our meal planning workshop. Of course, attendance is not mandatory for every class. And if you would like to register for the classes, you can call 818-837-5779. On this slide, you will see we have a few statements that try to help and promote a better outlook and lifestyle for a patient who wants to lose weight or have a healthier weight management. One of the things we always tell our patients is healthy is an outfit that looks different on everybody. And it's health that is real wealth, not pieces of gold and silver. That's by Mahatma Gandhi. And a great philosopher once said, let food be thy medicine and medicine thy food. Before going to this slide and talking about it, I would like you to take a look at the words on this slide and briefly take some time and think what comes to your mind. Our our philosophy here at FACI Medical Center is to make sure that we help our patients in a non-judgmental, habit-changing, enjoyment, moderation, balanced meals so that the patient continues to enjoy some of the foods that they like that maybe previously they've had to feel like they have to completely cut everything in half. Some of these words that we try to promote are non-judgmental, whole foods, nourish, variety, control, health, habits, regular, fresh, being mindful, making sure that the food is satisfying, and enjoyment. One of the questions that's always sought after, whether by medical professionals or individuals who want to lose weight all over the world is what contributes to weight gain? As you could see here, there's a trifecta of events or circumstances, backgrounds that cause weight gain. So one being genes, second, the diet, the individual's diet, and of course, our very own lifestyle. Your genes can definitely increase the risk of weight gain and disease when combined with diet and lifestyle. Food and exercise affect how genes are expressed. When it comes to diet, it's very important that individuals are aware, patients are aware, what are their portion sizes, the availability of food is, of course, important, making sure they understand what are processed foods. And of course, the media contributes what we eat as well. When it comes to lifestyle, the less movement is a big factor of weight gain. So is stress. Of course, given our daily activities and lifestyles, many of us end up eating in front of the TV or in the car due to long drives. That's 
another lifestyle factor that affects to weight gain. Now we would like to further investigate some myths about weight loss. One of the biggest myths that we hear is in order to lose weight, you have to give up all of your favorite foods. The fact is that our goal is not to make have someone give up all of their favorite foods, but you can simply enjoy a healthy snack or something that you've enjoyed, make it a little bit healthier, but in smaller portion sizes that it follows your weight loss plan. So you don't have to necessarily give up your favorite foods when you're trying to lose weight, but small amounts of your favorite high calorie foods may be part of your weight loss plan. A tip, enjoy some of your favorite high calorie food in smaller quantities. A second myth is that grain products such as bread, pasta, cereals, rice are fattening and that one should avoid them if they are trying to lose weight. The fact is that the grains themselves aren't fattening or unhealthy. They actually have nutrients that fuel your body, especially if you're starting an exercise routine. A tip is you wanna replace the refined white pastas, breads, packaged items with healthier, un refined choices such as whole grain breads, pastas, and of course we have to make sure that even if you're choosing the healthier options that you are following your portion sizes. Another myth is that you should avoid all fats if you're trying to be healthy and to lose weight. In fact, fats are very essential and provide nutrients um, that you should have as part of your daily meal plan. Um, you should still be limiting the amount of fat in your diet. However, you can definitely choose from healthier fats such as nuts, avocados, walnuts, um, extra virgin olive oil. Those are the healthy mono and the polysaturated fats. And a little bit later on, these topics, we're going to be talking about the different types of fats. A tip is you can add almond or peanut butter on a slice of whole grain toast or whole grain bread for a healthy and filling snack. Another myth is going vegetarian will help you lose weight and feel better. A plant-based diet with fruits, veggies, and beans may be linked to lower levels of obesity and heart disease. That's definitely a fact. Regardless, vegetarians can still make unhealthy food choices that could lead to weight gain. What you want to make sure you do is to aim to make half of your plate non-starchy vegetables, such as lettuce, tomatoes, spinach, mushrooms, okra, asparagus. And these will fill, up, fill you up and give your body the nutrients that it needs. Plus, they're typically very low in calorie and filled with lots of nutrients. Another myth is that low fat and fat free means no calories. In fact, many processed low-fat or fat-free foods may contain as just as much as calories as the full-fat version. They also have a lot of added flours, salt, starches, and sugars to improve the flavor and the texture given the fat was removed. So the fat is removed. However, a lot of times, other ingredients such as starch, flour, sugar is added to the product. One tip is you could add healthy fats such as nuts, seeds, avocados, and fatty fish to your meal plan. Also, you want to make sure to read the nutrition label to ensure that the ingredients match your goals. And again, we will be talking about reading ingredients as well and a little bit later on. Physical activity only counts if you do it for long periods of time. You do not need to be active for long periods to achieve your 150 to 300 minutes of activity goal per week. Experts advise doing aerobic activity for periods of 10 minutes or longer at a time. You can spread these sessions over a week. Break activity, and a tip is you can break up activity into 10 minute segments and work physical activity into your daily activity by taking the stairs, 
walking during your lunch breaks. Those are wonderful ideas to help increase your physical activity. Some other weight loss trends. Um, one of the most popular ones is Atkins or ketogenic, very low carb diets. What these diets are is that they pretty much eliminate most all of the carbohydrates from the meals. The cons are they're very poorly planned diets and that could lead into vitamin and mineral deficiencies. And eating high amounts of animal proteins could increase your cholesterol level. And the other very important information we give to our patients is that following a very low carb diet could be very difficult to maintain long term. Some other weight loss trends include Nutrisystem, Jenny Craig, Frozen Diets, and also other meal prep companies. What they are is diets composed of prepackaged or frozen meals. The cons are they can become quite expensive to keep up on a regular everyday lifestyle. They could be very processed. And the truth of the matter is they don't teach the individual meal planning strategies, which are very important with a healthy lifestyle change. They also don't teach individuals how to really shop for healthier foods or healthier cooking techniques. Juicing is another trend that we see all the time. Uh, juices that usually contain fruit juices, spices, and herbs are very popular. One of the biggest cons is that through the juicing process, the fiber is actually removed from the fruits and vegetables. So they're not a very balanced diet and you will be missing out on one of the more important nutrients from the fruits and vegetables, the fiber itself. Uh, Fruit-based ju uh, fruit juices also contain high amounts of sugar. And of course, this is very difficult to maintain long-term. Um, if we continue on the trends for weight loss, there are paleo, protein shakes, cleanses, apple cider vinegar, and Weight Watchers. Paleo is more whole food diets that remove food groups such as grains, legumes, and animal products. One of the cons is that they're very time consuming. There's also risk for nutrient loss. And of course, there's lots of challenges when eating out. Protein shakes, typically the recommendation is one to two shakes a day and a sensible dinner. They can become quite expensive. And honestly, if the patient patient is looking for a healthier lifestyle, they don't really teach healthy eating strategies, meal planning, or shopping, or cooking. The cleanses are popular as well. They can consist of laxatives, teas, or supplements intended for weight loss. One of the biggest issues here is that the cleanses can actually lead to dehydration, electrolyte imbalances, and we don't typically recommend them. Apple cider vinegar is very popular. Um, it's supposed to promote weight loss and also insulin resistance. Um, there has been research, some positive research. Um, it's been mainly done in animal studies and in human studies. The research found only of about two to four pounds over a three month period uh, in human studies for weight loss. So um, it's not something that we say don't do. However, it's important that the patient does understand the positives with the negatives or the cons with the pros. <laughs> weight Watchers. So Weight Watchers is a weight loss program which uses a point system to count calories. I've had patients with a lot of success with the Weight Watchers. One of the biggest cons that we see is that incorporating healthy fats is very difficult because they take up too many points. So that's one of the cons that we have seen. Incorporating healthy fats is, could become quite difficult. Let's talk a little bit about what are some healthy eating patterns. I'm sure many of you guys have heard about the DASH diet. Uh, that's dietary approaches to stopping hypertension or stop hypertension the Mediterranean diet, which is ranked number one year after year. And of course, there's the vegetarian diet. What is the DASH diet? 
So the DASH diet is a low sodium diet or meal plan that seems to lower the blood pressure and also the LDL cholesterol. The recommendations are eating vegetables, fruits, and whole grains. It includes fat-free or low-fat dairy products. Fish, poultry, beans, nuts, and vegetable oils are included in the meal plan. It, of course, limits foods high in saturated fats, such as um, bacon, butter, lard, and also it really doesn't promote tropical oils such as coconut and palm oil. Those are also limited in the DASH diet plan. The last two are a given. You want to limit your sugar, beverage intake, and sweets, or you want to make sure you're limiting your sugar, sweetened beverages, and sweet intake. And the other important information is to limiting the sodium intake to 2,300 milligrams per day. And if you want to even help lower your blood pressure even further, you would limit your uh, total sodium intake to 1,500 milligrams a day. On this slide, you will see the recommendations for the DASH diet. So when we are talking about whole grains, the recommendation is six to eight servings per day of the whole, whole grains, four to five servings of vegetables per day, four to five servings of fruits per day, two to three servings of fat-free or low-fat dairy products per day, four to five servings per week of nuts, seeds, and legumes, and less than six servings per day of lean meat, poultry, and fish, less than five servings per week of sweets, and less than two to three servings of fats and oils. Now, this slide can become very complicated. However, um, dietitians here at FACI, we have lots of different types of meal plans for the DASH diet that could, of course, be individualized and lots of different suggestions for breakfast, lunch, and dinner could also be incorporated into the education material provided. For today's purposes, this is just an overall view of what the DASH diet looks like and how many servings per meal. The Mediterranean diet has been very popular for numbers of reasons, for a number of reasons. The Mediterranean diet has been popular for a number of reasons. As you could see, studies have found that the Mediterranean diet has been associated with a lower risk of heart disease, cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and breast cancer in women. It is primarily plant-based foods, such as quinoa, lentils, uh, black beans, it promotes using healthy fats, again, such as avocados, walnuts, salmon, flaxseed, and it recommends using herbs and spices instead of salt, limiting red meat, having poultry and fish about two times a week, and drinking red wine in moderation is also suggested. And as you could see, getting plenty of exercise is a component of the Mediterranean diet that's very, very promoted and it helps with the weight loss as well. What would a Mediterranean diet look like? So plant-based food items include couscous, barley, wheat, pasta, garbanzo beans, and kidney beans. Half of the plate, as you could see, is filled with non-starchy vegetables and some healthy added fats, such as Kalmata olives, are, could be incorporated. There is about three to four ounces of baked salmon and a serving of the fruits accompanied with water. What are vegetarian diets? So a vegetarian diet is a diet that does not include meat, poultry, or fish. 
However, it does include animal byproducts, such as dairy products and eggs. The vegetarian diet has been associated with decreasing the risk of heart disease, diabetes, and some cancers. Different types of vegetarian diets include lacto-vegetarian, ovo-vegetarian, lacto-ovo-vegetarian, and this depends on the consumption of dairy and eggs. Vegans exclude all meat, all poultry, all fish, eggs, and dairy products, and foods that contain them. So there's the vegetarians, and then there's the vegans. So what would be some sources or protein if you're following a vegetarian diet. As you could see, eggs, even the egg whites, low-fat dairy products, such as Greek yogurt, nuts and nut butters, peanut butter, almond butter, seeds, beans, and tofu would be the sources of protein. If you're looking at a balanced plate for the vegetarian diet, you can see that the grains and starchy vegetables are five or more servings per day. The beans and lentils are three or more servings. A little bit less on the fruit, uh, about two servings. Nuts and seeds would be one to two servings a day and vegetables four or more servings. Now let's talk about some weight loss recommendations. According to NIH, research has shown that your health can be greatly improved by a loss of 5 to 10% of your starting body weight. Some of the suggestions we discuss with our patients is trying to lose about 1 to 2 pounds a week, and that would equivalent to decreasing your caloric consumption of about 500 to 1,000 calories per day. So you would need to cut back five to 1,000 calories on your caloric intake per day to lose one to two pounds a week. In order to do that, you must first identify how many calories you're actually consuming per day. This is something I work a lot with my patients. I start to investigate and see how many calories is the individual eating per day. The last two are, of course, equivalently equivalent. The last two are very important as well. Increasing physical activity. One of the suggestions is starting 30 to 45 minutes of moderate intense exercise three to five days a week. And to lose weight, you really want to aim for 300 minutes a week. That's about one hour or 60 minutes, five days a week of moderate activity. Some of the steps to losing weight. Number one, it's very important that you know your numbers. Knowing your numbers, meaning what are your lab results? What is your weight, uh, your blood pressure? Second is making sure that you understand and you know your habits. Are you snacking throughout the day? Do you end up overeating on the weekends or at nighttime? Do you stress eat? Of course, identifying the problem areas, setting goals, which we're going to talk a little bit about in this presentation, replacing the bad habits with good habits, and of course, one of the most important information is tracking your progress, because how do we know if something is working or it isn't working if we're not tracking the progress? So that is definitely a must. So step one, step one know your numbers. So on this slide, you can see these are some lab values that I would like to review with you. The recommendations are to have your total cholesterol level less than 200, your LDL anywhere between less than 130, but preferably less than 100. The LDL is your bad or low density lipoproteins. You would like your HDLs, which are your high-density lipoproteins or the happy lipoproteins. For males, we want them greater than 40. For females, we would like them greater than 50. How you can achieve these recommendations is having a high-fiber diet, limiting those saturated fats, trans fats, dietary cholesterol, 
increasing your heart health fats, 30 minutes of exercise daily, and if you are a smoker, quitting smoking. Triglyceride levels, the recommendations are less than 150. If your triglycerides are high, you can try increasing your diet with fatty fish, flax seeds, or walnuts, otherwise known as omega-3 fatty acids. Limiting alcohol and sugary drinks. Those are the Starbucks drinks, uh, uh, margaritas, alcohol. Those should be limited. And avoiding simple sugars. Simple sugars come from white bread, pasta, rice, croissants, pancakes, cereals. Your A1C should be the recommendation less than 5.7%. The A1C is a three-month accumulation of how your blood sugar trends have been. This will inform the doctor and yourself if you are normal, if your blood sugars are in the normal range, pre-diabetes or diabetes range. The goal, again, is less than 5.7. You would like the recommendations are 30 minutes of exercise daily, of course, having a balanced diet with proper portion sizes. The last two we're going to talk in the next slide for the BMI. We want the goal for the BMI or the body mass index to be less than 25 and blood pressure is 120 over 150. If you are struggling with high blood pressure, you want to reduce your salt intake. And of course, you could follow the DASH diet, which was the dietary approaches to stop hypertension and avoid adding salt to your meals. And of course, looking into the, pre the looking into if you're having a lot of packaged foods in your meal plan. So what exactly is the BMI? A BMI is an estimate of the body fat based on an individual's weight and height. This only applies to adults, not pediatrics. The higher the BMI, research has found, the higher the, the risks of certain diseases, such as diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure. The goal for your BMI should be 18.5 to 24.9. You can always calculate your BMI using the CDC or NIH calculator. On this slide, you can see this is the Mayo Clinic's BMI chart. Vertically, it has the height, and then horizontally, it's listed your weight. So for example, a 5'3 individual in the, in the green category, for example, it would be 135, would be an, a decent weight. The higher the weight, the higher, again, the comorbidities, we call them. So we want your BMI to be in the green. When it's in the yellow and so forth, there's an increased risk, again, of type 2 diabetes, elevated cholesterol, sleep apnea, depression, those are the links, the higher the BMI, the higher the health risks associated with obesity. So body fat percentage, what does this measure? It helps better determine the fitness level. Uh, it actually is the pounds from fat versus muscle. It measures what is your fat versus muscle. There, if you are, well, <laughs> at the gyms, you could ask, a gym personnel if they have the tools to test your body fat. This is something that's very helpful for individuals who are starting their, to see uh, if they're having any weight loss or if they're gaining muscle. Step number two for weight loss uh, tips. You want to know your habits. So one of the most important information that we give to our patients is for weight loss is food journaling. This helps you see your patterns. And also, if you food journal, you can also keep track of your nutritional intake. My Fitness Pal and Lose It are two of the apps that you can use to keep to see what is your daily caloric intake or your nutritional intake as well. Step number three, identify problem areas. If you're food journaling, you could identify is grazing all day or having heavy evening snacks are the meal? Are you having processed foods or fast foods often? Are you skipping meals? Uh, drinking? Are you drinking your calories? 
smoothies. A lot of times patients are having fruit juices, fruit smoothies, uh, liquid shakes, juices. Again, those could be a lot of calories and maybe you're not getting enough fruits and vegetables. With the MyFitnessPal, you can actually track if your diet is low in fiber and also if your calories are too high from the meal and also the snack. These are some sample food diaries. So what are some effective goals? One of the most effective goals are SMART goals. That's specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. Another goal is you another way you can set your goals is using the whoop method which is wish outcome obstacle and plan if you go to whoopmylife.org you will find more information so for example wish something you really want to accomplish a wish is exciting challenging and realistic an outcome is the best outcome would result from accomplishing your goal how would the outcome make you feel? Let your mind go and imagine the outcome. An obstacle. So what would be an obstacle? A setback. And a plan. What can you do to overcome the obstacle? Name one action you can take or thought you can have. Make it an if-then plan and imagine it. So for example, losing weight by exercising in the morning. The wish, the wish would be exercising in the morning right after waking up. The outcome would be feeling proud and energetic. Uh, you would feel like you're doing a great job and losing weight. An obstacle would be, I don't feel like exercising this morning and just skipping it. A plan would be if you get up early in the morning and immediately put on the running clothes and start exercising so that you could go ahead and achieve your goal. Step number five, replace bad habits with good habits. In the next few classes, we're going to learn about balanced meals, portion control, grocery shopping, label reading, meal planning, food triggers, mindful eating, stress, physical activity, and habit changes. There's always a new way of looking at stuff. The National Weight Loss Registry found that individuals who maintained a greater than 30 pound weight loss for a year or more, they followed 10,000 people and these were their findings. 98% of the individuals of the 10,000 population modified their food intake in some way. So less calories, less fat. 94% increased their physical activity, for example, walking. 90% exercise on an average one hour per day, 62% watch less than 10 hours of TV per week, and 75% of them weight themselves at least once a week. I'm sure you guys have heard of the very popular eat this not that. On this slide you will see we have eating more and limiting. So of course we want the patients to choose more whole foods with low added fats, salt and sugar, and limiting high processed foods with lots of added fat, salt and sugar. So instead of a pizza with um, pepperoni or sausage, you can choose a vegetable pizza with bell peppers, mushrooms, some olives for added veggies. Instead of burgers or a hot dog, you can always switch to a whole grain sandwich with lettuce, tomatoes, and a lean turkey breast or even chicken breast. You always want to make sure that you rethink your drink if, in fact, you're having a lot of calories come from your drinks. Some of the suggestions are spa waters by adding a few cubes of maybe watermelon, lemon, uh, or some berries to water. There's also diffusers where you could put a few of the fruits in a water bottle. No added sugar iced teas with some lemon. Coffee, decaf or regular without any sweeteners. And of course, there's the spritzer waters, the carbonated 
no sugar added waters. <clears throat> In this slide, we're going to be talking about how do we create a balanced plate. A balanced plate is where half of your nine inch diameter plate is served with lots of non-starchy vegetables. That's lettuce, tomatoes, spinach, mushrooms, green beans, radishes. You also want to have a serving of a grain that's going to be a quarter of the plate and a quarter of the plate will be filled with a protein. This picture over here is the nutrition facts. You always want to start with reading the serving sizes. You also want to check the calories per serving. For example, this is a sample label of a mac and cheese. One cup has 250 calories. You always want to limit the fats, the cholesterol, and the sodium. And you want to make sure you're getting enough of the vitamins and minerals. The footnotes is most of the most of the percentages that you see where it says percent daily value. You want those to be, if it's 5% or less, it's low. 20% or more means it's pretty high. Percent daily value are based on a 2000 calorie diet. Your daily values may be higher or lower depending on your caloric needs. The new nutrition label. One of the things is that the calories from fat have been removed. And also the added sugars have been added. So as you could see on the pre on the original label, the nutrition facts, it has 37 grams of total carbs. As you see on the new label, it also has 10 grams of added sugars. So on the new nutrition labels, you will be seeing how much added sugars are to the meals. So you always wanna make sure that you read the ingredients. Ingredients are listed in descending order. Make sure that those ingredients you want more of are listed first, such as whole grains. Those you want less are not one of the first few ingredients, such as sugars and hydrogenated oils. Shorter is better. So some other names for added sugars are brown sugar, corn syrup, dextrose, fructose, fruit juice. You want to always make sure that when you're reading these ingredients, you want very little of these added sugars. So this is a little fun activity we like to do with our patients. This is called food face off. As you could see, these are two coffee creamers. One of them is Coffee Mate, a very popular one that I'm sure you have seen. And the other one is half and half. If you look at the ingredient list, you will see more than five ingredients listed on the Coffee Mate. And the first ingredient on the coffee creamer is sugar versus the half and half where it's organic grade A milk and cream. In the coffee creamer, in four teaspoons, there's nine grams of carbs, and in two tablespoons, there's only one gram of carb. The other things you will see is the calories, 60 calories versus 35, and also the saturated fat is the same, but as you can see, there's a lot of added ingredients and process ingredients that are listed to the coffee creamer. Let's talk a little bit about physical activity. So aerobic activity strengthens the heart and the lungs. It helps you use oxygen better. You want to aim for 150 minutes per week. That's about 22 minutes per day. Try one of these activities, brisk walking or jogging, bicycling, swimming, or even Zumba. Strength training builds the strength of your muscles, such as the chest, the back, abdominals, leg, and arm. You want to aim for two to three times per week of strength training. You want to try these options, such as lifting weights. It could be very light weights, two to four pounds. Um, Push-ups. You could work with resistant bands. Yoga. Practicing yoga as a part of an overall healthy lifestyle can help lower blood pressure, increase lung capacity, improve respiratory function, improve balance, 
boost circulation and give an overall sense of well-being. It is not the yoga is not included the hundred in the hundred and fifty minute of recommended moderate or intense activity. However, it could definitely be uh, something that you can practice within your physical activity regimen. And of course, avoid long periods without move, moving. Interrupting, uh, interrupt long periods of sitting every thirty minutes to help reduce the risk of diseases such as diabetes and heart disease. Step number six, we're almost getting closer to the end of the session. Track your progress. So track food intake using a food journal, track your calories using MyFitnessPal, track your exercise, track your weight, and of course you can track your body fat percentage. You wanna celebrate non-scale victories. For example, your energy level, your clothes, your boost of mood, how are you feeling? Um, how are your clothes fitting? Over here are some helpful resources for nutrition and recipe website. Calorie King, eatingwell.com, heart.com, diabetes.org. Some of the phone apps you can use are MyFitnessPal, Lose It, and Healthy Out. Over here are a list of books. Uh, there's one that is very popular, Food Rules by Michael Pollan is very popular. Uh, Intuitive Eating is another one, and What to Eat by Marion Nessel. They are all wonderful books if you're interested in looking into them. Weight loss tips. Don't skip meals, drink plenty of water, eat lots of vegetables, have protein with your meals and snacks, Avoid high fat, high sugar foods. You want to set realistic goals. Keep a food journal. Reward, but not with food. Manage your stress. And of course, change negative self talk. Some other interventions you can talk to your provider about are support groups, medications, and weight loss surgery. Please take advantage of our free classes. We offer diabetes, heart disease and diabetes prevention, disease management, and general wellness classes. If you are interested, you can call 818-837-5779 to schedule an appointment. This is the patient education line number. If you are a smoker, we do offer some classes at FACI to help you with um, quitting smoking. Quitter circle is for smokers who want to make a quit attempt. Okay, that brings us to the end of our presentation. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope the presentation was valuable. I look forward to seeing you guys at our class too.